somebody's hand. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. a few more. Thank God for that. Everybody glad you're saved? Say amen. Yes. Good to be back at the Lord's house. We appreciate this good music, all these musicians. And thank you so much for that good playing. And we thank the Lord for it. Good to have organ player, piano player, all these other players. Amen. And we thank God for his grace and his mercy. It's sure good to see you on this Wednesday night. We appreciate the grace of God and what he's done for us, what he continues to do. And we just appreciate what the Lord's fixing to do. He's been so good to us. We can't thank him enough. Amen. So you'll be much in prayer. Let me just mention a couple things. Uh, this coming Sunday night, Sunday morning, of course, Sunday school. And we appreciate you doing everything you can to get everybody into Sunday school and uh, having some good Sunday school services. And what a blessing that that is. And so we want you to continue to do so, get the word out. Uh, start at 9.30 in the prayer room, of course. Uh, this is kind of redundant, but the Baptist, you might have to announce it about three times every service. And then, of course, uh, uh, Sunday school. Sunday school is a wonderful thing. Amen. We thank God for Sunday school. Amen. And we thank God for these good teachers. Amen. Amen. What a help it is to these young people. And what a joy it is to be able to come and learn around the Word of God and let God do something in everybody's life. So don't forget that. This Sunday night, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, uh, Mountain Joy, uh, these ladies coming out of Haywood County, and they'll be singing for us on Sunday evening. And so we're looking forward to that. They're supposed to be in here in January, and they got COVID. And so I talked to me the other day, and the COVID's over. And so if they don't get COVID between now and Sunday, they'll be here Sunday. And they'll be at the 5 o'clock service. And these ladies, they married my two first cousins. And uh, so you pray for them that the Lord's will be done. And uh, Brother William back here, he knows them. And uh, we just appreciate them coming. And so you get the word out. And everybody likes somebody can sing so they can sing. Now, don't get the wrong idea because they're kin to me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And Reinhardt's may not be able to sing, but they can sure marry somebody can I get an amen right there? Thank God for that. Matter of fact, some places I get to go, I only get to go because Pat can sing. But we thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy. And so don't forget that. That's Sunday night. Get the word out. And a lot of places ain't having no services. Tim, come on, be with us. And we'll be here 5 o'clock looking for God to do great things. And so don't forget that. Pray the Lord just continue to do what's needed. Then, of course, Sunday morning, we'll be continuing on with uh, worship service at 11 o'clock. And we're looking for God to do great things. Let's get everybody wound up and uh, pumped up and ready to go up. And uh, we're looking for God to do great things then. Amen. And so we're looking for the Lord to do something and then continuing on up. Thanksgiving will be here before you know it, about a month. And so you'll be much prayer about that. October 22nd, 11 o'clock a.m., they'll have a youth fellowship. They're going to Fender Farms, a uh, farmer's daughter. Fender's Farms and the farmer's daughter. Man, I tell you what, you go to Fender Farms to get ready for the farmer's daughter. <laughs> and uh, sign up in front of the church. So uh, if you're under 100, then coming up on the 20th, October 20th, which will be a week from Thursday, 12 o'clock, be senior. They have a senior meal. Senior meal this year will be out here in the fellowship building. So you just come as you are. And uh, don't bring nothing. We'll, we're going to furnish it. So uh, you just come on and eat. How's that sound? So we expect expecting you to bring a covered dish uh, or any of that stuff. You just come. We'll have something for you to eat. And so we're looking forward to that. Dean, you look so happy. <laughs> He's all broke up. But uh, <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be next Thursday. And I've got to pick at Dean a little bit. I ain't got to pick at him in a while. Uh, but uh, we like to pick on Dean, 
And so you just pray God's will be done. And we're glad for what the Lord's doing for Thelma. And uh, Connie Ballard, he went back down to the doctor yesterday. And they said he's doing good. And so he kind of didn't feel good today, probably the trip. And so you continue praying for him. And Brenda was feeling under the weather today. So don't forget that. Then uh, we got quite a few other people. I'm sure they've got some kind of sickness because sickness sits in this time of year. And so you remember them at the Lord's will be done. And God would continue to do what's needed and pray for Polly. Polly needs your prayers. And God just continue to touch her. I got a call from my younger brother, uh, Wesley Reinhardt, his wife's mother, and Dalton Georgia in very serious condition requesting prayer. So they watch this uh, streaming about it all the time. So I sure, sure want to mention that. And so you pray for them at the God's will be done. And Ruth Ariaga, right? This Kathy's sister, she needs her prayers that God's will be done. Her niece, Teresa, is in the hospital. And uh, so pray pneumonia and more blood clots. We pray for her. Pray God's will be done. Last time I see her, she's had blood clots up there. So pray God's will be done. He'd be washing it. And everybody glad you saved. Have I missed anything? Have I missed anything? Y'all look so good. Amen. Let me get you stand. We'll turn to the book of Acts, chapter 27. I was wanting to finish this. Uh, get through the book of Acts. I may not get this finished till next week. I'm just going to hit highlights because when you come down to the 27th, 28th chapter, it really mushrooms. And there's just so much. But uh, I'm sure you've got the gist of the book. And we appreciate the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a blessing. We thank God for it. It gives us good old-fashioned church history. What a blessing that it is. We see the Holy Ghost of God as he came and moved into the church. And what a blessing it is. And tomorrow night, take, how about visitation tomorrow night? Amen. Six o'clock. So keep that in mind. And pray for Bill Metcalf. He's on his way if the wheels don't run off. So you pray for him that the Lord's will be done. Got 35 miles out of Lewistown. Got the Grace Range and the first wheel went. It didn't surprise me. I figured what surprised me, it didn't happen 15 miles out. Uh, I'll explain that later. Uh, but you pray for them. I think he's being crossed for about 7.30 our time. And uh, so you just pray for them that the Lord's will be done. And we're grateful for God's grace and God's mercy. Amen. I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing with them. Josh called me last night and told me a few things, and he couldn't talk for rolling. I mean, he rode. So I found some pictures of vehicle coming down the road, pulling a trailer, and the wheel run off, and it run off, and the sparks was flying, and there's a fellow in the truck, and he looked like Mike Goodson, and he was, and so I put them together and said, wait on me, Bill. <laughs> Acts chapter 27. The Bible said that when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus, of, the, of Augustus' band, and entering into a ship of Adramidium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. One Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when he had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Tam Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city in Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when he had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were uh, come over against Sinaitis, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under, uh, under Crete and against Salome, uh, Salmone, and hardly passing it, came into a place which is called the Fire Havens. Now whereunto was the city of Lycia. 
You can be seated. Now, if you jump on down to verse number 25, verse number 25, I believe a memory verse for chapter number 27 would be, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Paul's given them some words of comfort and some more words of exhortation because they've entered into the storm. And when the storm hit, a lot of things took place. So when you get to the book of Acts chapter number 27, in Acts chapter number 27, we see several things here. We could call this the pathway of God's will, the pathway of God's will. We look at God's will sometimes, the pathway is not always easy. It's not always rosy. Now we know that we're gonna have a safe landing, but between point A and point B, we don't know what we're going to face, but God's word tells us that Paul faced some things because he wanted to be in God's will, and he was in God's will. And as he's traveling in God's will, there's some things that befell them. Between Acts 23, verse number 11, when God promised Paul that he would witness in Rome, he told him he was going to Rome, so you're going to preach in Rome. He told him that, Acts 23, verse number 11. In Acts chapter 28, verse 16, when Paul actually came to Rome, he told him he was going to Rome. So in the book of Acts chapter 28 and verse 16, when he actually came to Rome, there was a period of three or four years with many unusual and precarious circumstances. So a lot of things took place in these three to four years. And all these things took place. And God told him, said, you're going. When God says you're going somewhere, you're going somewhere. When God said you can go from here, you're going go over there, you're going over there. You be God's child, I guarantee you. You may have to zigzag. You may have a lot of mountains and a lot of valleys, but I guarantee you when God says you're going somewhere, you're going somewhere. When he says you're going to be there, you're going to be there. So several things that I want to point out, and I could just look all night long because it's so much, and we're just grateful for what God's done. But if you go back and you look at Paul, whenever we look back in the 26th chapter, the Word of God says this was a beautiful story. It was beautiful because here Paul, he's on his way to Rome. He wanted to go to Rome. He desired to go to Rome. He appealed to go to Rome. So Rome was the destiny. That's where he was headed. He was headed there and to stand before the emperors and things of that nature. And if you notice, the Word of God says he's on his way and the Bible says the pathway to God's will. First thing we look at is time. What is time? When you look at time, it often often takes quite a while for the fulfillment of the will of God. It often takes quite a bit of time. I mean, you don't just snap your fingers and say, that's it. You don't just sit back and a lot of folks think that if you're a missionary or if you're out doing something for the glory of God that you, uh, it's all sitting around under palm trees, a gentle wind a blowing, somebody fanning you, feeding you grapes and things of that nature, but that ain't always so. Matter of fact, that ain't a bit so. God's Word teaches us when we look at the things of God and He tells us about time. Sometimes it takes time for the fulfillment of God's will in our life. In other words, the Bible teaches us we may have to be patient while we're reaching the desired, what would you call it, the desired end that we've got to be patient. And there's something that every Baptist must learn, and that's this thing called patience. Patience. Now, Paul wanted to go to Rome, but look what he's going through to get to Rome. He's got to go through a whole lot of stuff to get to Rome. And the Word of God tells us this is time. So time, when time, uh, whatever time you've invested, whatever's going on, and you don't get there right then, don't get excited. Just wait because God's doing something. God's preparing. Maybe not the end, but He's preparing you. See, heaven's prepared. But what He's got to do, He's got to prepare us, a prepared people for a prepared place. So God's got to do that. So in our life, when things happen and we don't get it right then, just keep waiting. Just keep waiting waiting on God. Just keep praying. Just keep bombarding heaven. Don't give up and say, well, it's been three hours and no answer. It's been iron half and no answer. Thank God I'm here to tell you some folks have prayed for a whole generation for somebody to even get saved. And the word of God says somewhere down the road, God got hold of them. Now what if they'd give up a long time ago? What if they'd give up on that individual? I'm glad that God Almighty, he honors his word and he will answer prayer for the glory of God. We know it's God's will to save somebody. We know it's God's will to save the lost. So the word of God goes on. Not only the time, but what about the price? There's a price in this particular case. There's possibility. Uh, 
that Paul is God's using him. And Paul uh, could have went to Rome, but he went to Jerusalem first. He desired to go to Jerusalem. We went back to Jerusalem in the book of Acts. He could have went right on to Rome. But we know some things took place and maybe God was working with him to do something. Some folks says he went out the will of God whenever he went to Jerusalem when he should have went on to Rome. Now, whether he was or he was, the fact is that God had his hand on Paul. And God used old Paul. And the word of God says here he was. And, 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 and he could have went to Rome right off the bat. But he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And that's what he did. And the Bible teaches us when a person, whether he was or he wasn't, when a person leaves the will of God, maybe not the exact perfect will of God, that don't mean they've turned into a vagabond. That don't mean they've turned into some kind of just a run down hill. It's a hill church member. But sometimes they just miss God's will but a little bit. And brother, I'm here to tell you, does that mean God just gives up on you? No, sir. I wish I could say that ever since I got saved in 73, that I've been in God's perfect will. But I couldn't say that. Now, a lot of, no, a lot of Baptists, they can. But I've always tried to seek God's will. And sometimes, even before they come out with these GPSs, anybody got a GPS? Hey, like having GPS, and it telling you to go somewhere and you miss it, and it says, recalculate. Make a safe U-turn. Amen. That ain't too bad. I had the Holy Ghost doing that in my life many years ago. Right. Holy Ghost works in our life. Yes, if we let the Holy Ghost God work in our life, we may miss it by several feet. We may miss it by several miles. But God Almighty, he'll recalculate the situation. Yeah. And God will bring us to the right end. Because the Bible comes back and he tells us here's the price. And I'm grateful for God's amazing grace. And the Bible tells us it often takes testing for that individual to get back where God can really use them. This may or may not be uh, what happened in the life of Paul. I do not know. But I do know one thing, that God used this man. He used him mightily. He used him. We've got this blessed book. We've got the book of Acts. Here's his life. Here's his history. Then he wrote 14 books in the New Testament. So God used him mightily. And God used him. He's in God's will and done God's will and God used him. The church is blessed today because this man, he lived for the Lord Jesus Christ. He put Jesus first. You look at his writings and he always talked about for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. He always wanted to give everything to God. He wanted to die up to self and to the world and be alive unto God and I'm glad that we have a man like this as an example. Now he wasn't perfect but he served a perfect Savior. He served a perfect God. And then there's a third thing, the friends. What about the friends? Go back to the book of Acts chapter 27 verse number 1. When you look at the friends, if you notice in Acts chapter 27 and verse number 1 he says that when it was determined that we, and I want you to look at that word we, you might put a circle around that we and you might ask the question, who in the world is he talking about? Somebody's writing this book. Somebody's writing this book and as they pin this down and they send it out to us and to the church and things of that nature. The man that wrote I believe the book of Acts was Luke I believe Luke wrote the gospel of Luke. I believe God let him write the book of Acts. And I believe as he started out in Acts chapter number one, he just picked up where it stopped off in the book of Luke chapter number 24. And here it is. And I believe that old Luke was traveling with Paul on this vessel. And I believe as you look around and you see, he said, we, if you look at Acts 27 verse number one, Luke obviously was with Paul on this trip for he speaks what? In the first pronoun, the first personal. He's talking about himself. He says, we, we were. He didn't say they were or somebody else was, but somebody was writing the book. Somebody's writing it down. And he said, we, thank God for that. Ain't you got friends? That, ain't you glad you got friends that go all the way? Ain't you glad you got friends that's not fire weather friends? Ain't you glad you've got friends if the storms come, they'll stick? Ain't you glad you got friends that whenever the sun ain't shining, the friends will stick? They'll be right there, amen, regardless what you befall or what befalls you. I'm glad that there's somebody that'll stay there all the way. As we find and do the will of God, God gives us friends. I wouldn't take nothing for friends. Amen. Give me friends. You say, preacher, give me money. Well, you ain't going to get it alone. Did you get that? You better start putting friends in the bank and forget about everything else. Amen. 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 I lost another. We lost, uh, how many trees have we lost, uh, you bankers? How many trees have we lost since this crash? And the crash ain't even happened yet. I said, we, if you've got any money in a full winter or anything, you have money in that. 
When it fell in 2009, when Obama took over, it fell in 2009. I come here and I said, we just got through losing $1.2 trillion. And somebody said, where'd you get this way? I had $250 in. <laughs> and until you get the $250 calculated in, it's not a complete $1.25 trillion without my $250. Right. Amen? Amen? So when you look around and see me treating we've lost, cry the blues, you've lost it. Amen? But I'm grateful for God's grace. But if you'll notice, the Bible teaches us that God, here it is, life's best friends. I'd rather have friends as anything I know. If you've got friends, I'll guarantee you, you've got what you need. I'll guarantee you. They'll take care of that for the glory of God. Life's best friends, they're found in the pathway of doing the will of God, of doing the will of God. How many people have you cried with? How many people have you, have you laughed with? How many people have you prayed with? How many people have you traveled with? How many people, brother, have you uh, worked through and seen some things work through for God to do something in their life for them to encourage you or exhort you or give you what you need, admonish you, that you go on for the glory of God, friend. Thank God for friends, and here he has. He has friends, and if you read on, the Bible teaches us that only Luke is with me. When he gets to the epistles, he talks about this man. This man was a sticker. He was a sticker, and he stuck with old Paul, and I'm grateful for that, and thank God for that. So never neglect your friends. Never look down on your friends. Never say, boy, I can do without them. I'm telling you what's the truth. You, you better keep everyone you got. Amen. 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 I had one of those... Uh, uh, milligrams. Anybody ever had a milligram? We don't want to fake them anymore. Milligram. What they do, they stick a needle in you and put that bright stuff wherever the testing turn on your head and the x ray. So I talked to Gene Edwards, and Gene Edwards, my friend, and he said that he had it. I never had it. So I won't talk. Somebody had it. And Gene said, if I ever have it again, said, I'd rather die than let them put that thing in my neck. So I go in and see Dr. Montgomery, and I'm sitting there, and I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> Dr. Montgomery came in, he looked at me and said, stand up, and I stood up, and he walked around me looking at my profile. He said, if you're 16 and your skin is real, so I'd go in your back. But he said, since you ain't, I'm going to go right in there. I felt like Fred Sanford, Elizabeth. <laughs> I started sweating bullets. I went over and sat down and I said, Doc, if it seems like I'm nervous, I said, it's because I'm nervous. <laughs> Him and the nurses, they fell over the gurney. They're dying life. And I said, I don't know what you laughing about. <laughs> Son, my knees is knocking. I think it's playing going across Georgia. And he come in there and he stuck that thing in my neck. And all I could think about Gene said, I'd rather die. I'd rather die. I don't know what I'm he was 45 minutes late because not trying to calm me down, but trying to calm herself down. And they put that thing in there. It wasn't half as bad as I thought. It wasn't half as bad as I thought. I said, now I'm going to see my friend when I get out of here. I'm going to say, friend? But Gene, what did I ever do to hurt you? <laughs> what did I ever do that you'd set me up? But he had a bad experience, and he thought everybody would, but I didn't. Whew. I sweat him. Amen. It's the unknown. It's the unknown. If they just go ahead and put a sleep before we get up there, we wouldn't have time to think about it. But grateful to God for God's amazing grace. He's kind of, some of you folks are just like me, right? Amen. Yeah. Boy, we're grateful for God's grace. But ain't you glad for friends? I'm glad for friends. And I appreciate friends. And brother, I'm here to tell you, your best friend, life's best friends. The Bible teaches us that they're found in the pathway of doing the will of God. Then notice something about storms. Storms are something we don't like. Storms are something that's necessary. We've got to have storms. The way God set this thing up in the seven continents and the seas and all that, he set it up to where they'd be sure that he could feed these continents water. And sometimes it takes storms to drive the clouds, to drive them to the high places 
where the clouds can get heavy and drop the rain. After it goes down, it evaporates in the ocean and God separates the salt water from the pure water and he builds a big old cloud and then he blows it in. Sometimes it's devastating, but God, amen. Somebody said they're real devastating. If you look at comparing the last 75 years, 75 years ago with a storm like we had the other day is now, you'll find out it might have been bad, but there wasn't as many people killed out of this one because we've learned so much out of it and we've got prepared for it in many cases, amen. And the storms come. And the storms are not to hurt you. They won't hurt you. They're not to hurt you. Let's put it that way. I'm glad that the storms are there. If you look at Acts chapter 27, verse 14 through 20, I'll not read all them. We may expect storms along the way as we do God's will. Now, if you're going to do God's will, I'm going to tell you, you just ain't going to jump up and do it, and that's going to be the end of it. David Plymouth sat back here. He's pastored all over the place, and he's pastored some of the hardest places there is. One of them was Haywood County. Amen. And I'll guarantee there were storms. He pastored in Chandler. I'll guarantee there's storms. Anything worth having, anything worth doing for the glory of God, Slewfoot's going to do everything he can for reaching it. What do you do? What do you do? You just set your face like a flint, set your sight on what God wants you to do, and just keep treading on for the glory of God. Storms are there. Storms are there. Best thing to do is be prepared for the storm. Find out from God's word. Let's look at some things about the storms right quick. We may expect the storms along the way as we do God's will. These are to test us. They will test us. Matter of fact, they strengthen you. They make you stronger. They're not to hurt you. They're to make you stronger. You say, why did God do this to me? God didn't do it. God permitted it. God must have really liked you and loved you because he was willing to say, hey, go ahead, try him. Right. Amen. Ain't that what Satan told God about Job? said, ah, oh, he's just serving you because you're giving him something. You take what he's got and he'll curse you. God said, all right, Mr. Devil. said, you go ahead. You go ahead and do it. You go ahead and take everything he's got, but don't you touch his life. You can go ahead. And when he did, what did Job do? I don't know anybody that's had to go to the funeral home and pick out 10 coffins, go down to the cemetery and bury 10 youngins to see their whole livelihood gone. Every animal they've got's dead. All the things they've got's destroyed. And then some people throw off on poor Miss Job. We don't know what Miss Job went through. We do know that she came to him at least once. and said, why don't you just curse God and die? And what she was saying, listen, your life depends on this and you're in misery and you've got these balls all over you and you're, in, you're really in, in, in bad shape. Maybe she was looking at some of these modernistic views and saying, you'd be better off dead. But she said, won't you go ahead and curse God and die? He said, you talk like a foolish one. He said, I came in this world with nothing and I'm leaving here with nothing. And the Bible said that he never one time cursed God through every bit of it. First Baptist Church sent down three miserable comforters. Every one of them knew exactly what went on in Job's life. Every one of them, they beat their chest and patted herself on the back and said, boy, if you'd been like us, you wouldn't be going through this. If you'd sent that thousand dollar proof God offered to so-and-so on TBN, you wouldn't be going through this. Just ought to throw that in. Job said, I came in this world with nothing. I'm going out with nothing. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, brother, if that ain't devotion, that's not blind devotion. That's devotion to somebody that you know personally and God takes care of. The Bible said he does it to test us, then to prepare us. He prepares us. He prepares us. I'm glad that he does prepare us. There's a bigger one down the road, so be ready. Another one down the road, and all God's doing is just strengthening you. He's just testing you. He's just kind of preparing you, getting you ready. Amen. If we had time, we'd stop just a minute, and everybody here would stand up and tell about a storm that you've been in, that you went through. The Bible teaches us we're either going in a storm, we're coming out of a storm, or we're fixing to go into it. 
Storms all around us, but I'm glad for God's grace, ain't you? Looking back on them, the Bible tells us he does all this to keep us independent or dependent upon God. He wants us dependent upon him. If you notice, the Bible said when we look back, we see these things. But the Bible said when we look toward them and enduring them, we find out that God wants us to have faith that we will see later that they were for our good. You've been through something and said, boy, I didn't understand at the time. But God sure was working in my life. He's working in that situation. I'm grateful for God's amazing grace and for what he's done, what he continues to do. Then notice number five, there's God's leadership. God's leadership. Ain't you glad you're following God? Well, if we followed man, we'd be in a mess. You're talking about being in a mess. We're in a worse mess. We think we are. I'm going to finish that Sunday morning, but I'll give you a little hint. We've seen some new things this week. We've seen a man that has declared that this looks more like Armageddon than ever before. He's talking, supposed to be a madman in Russia, a madman that's got nukes. He's talking about a madman in North Korea that's testing ballistic missiles. He blurts it out so everybody can understand it or everybody can hear it. Then you got the Chinese and all these others that's got all these different nukes and all that. And here he's talking about this stuff and he's talking about, well, we'll take care of that. Then as soon as the Saudi Arabian says we're going to cut the oil production, going to cut it before election, and he says, I forget the exact words he said, but he says, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. Now, boy, ain't that great? If I want to buy something for you and you won't sell it, now what do I do? Do I come around here and do something to get even with you? Because you wouldn't sell it to me. If you, you folks need to watch this because what we're doing, we are absolutely taking the whole wide world and having them turn against this nation called America. This is not by accident. This is not by accident. If you've ever prayed, you need to pray. You need to pray that God would help us. You say, preacher, you're crazy. I may be. But if you'll look back down through history and you'll see what men done, what nations have done, you see that we're doing the very same thing. Matter of fact, we're worse than we ever was. And I'm here to tell you, looks to me like we'd have somebody with some backbone would have somebody care enough for the American people. I don't want to get political. I ain't seen nobody do nothing for you. Amen. I'm not talking about getting checked. I'm talking about making sure that you're protected. Taking care of your well-being. Amen. Now, it's okay to give one half billion dollars a month to Ukraine. And I don't know whether Ukraine sucker, suckered us in on this. I do not know. But we've said we'll stay with them to the bitter end. Well, they better not get in on all that. Amen? We need some good leadership. But if you notice, we need God's leadership. Has anybody asked God to help us in that budget in Washington? Has anybody asked God to do something for us? Amen. No, but they've done everything they could to go after Christians. Amen. They're arresting them 30 at a time. Amen. They don't like to let it get out in the news. Yes, sir. Fellow that's sat in the abortion clinic, I'm trying to think of his name, 11 months ago, they didn't do nothing. The other day, he's got 11 young ones, and they come with guns drawn, arrested him. And it happened a year ago. But he's a Christian. He said, he's protecting the babies. Now, don't get scared. Hey, storms. But you be what God wants you to be for the glory of God. You be what God wants you to be. Amen? I didn't list all that stuff, but it, it, it's just simply amazing. It looks to me like somebody has stepped up and said, wait just one minute. Wait just one minute. Amen? Am I with like-minded minded people? Y'all feel the same way that maybe somebody ought to do something? Yes. Let, me, let me get this. You will recall the Lord told Paul in Acts chapter 23, verse number 11, that he would testify in Rome. He said, you're going to Rome. Right. Now he assures 
He assures him of safety in the storm. Now in chapter 27, he's on the ship. Storm's breaking. Here it comes. And God gives him some assurance. God assures him he's going to take care of him. He assures him of his safety. You're not only going to Rome, but I'm going to get you there. And while I get you there, I'm going to let you be a witness. Don't worry about putting on a life jacket. You've already got one on. Don't worry about having a lifeboat. You don't own the lifeboat. Don't worry about having some kind of a big old rescue boat because the ship is high. Thank God sailing under you. And everything will be all right for the glory of God Almighty. He assures him of the safety in the storm. It is so interesting that he usually takes the storm to bring an angel. Sometimes we never notice God, and I'm going to preach on this sometime. Sometimes we never pay God any attention till we get in a storm. Yes, sir. Right. Sometimes it takes a storm to bring God's angel. Amen. Sometimes it takes a storm for us to recognize, boy, we're in need. When everything's sunny, everything's smooth, we don't think a whole lot of it. But boy, as soon as that storm hits, Amen. ain't you glad that when the storm does hit, that God don't forsake you. You might not have thought of him in the last 30 days. Amen. Things might look good, it's going good, but all of a sudden, here comes the storm. Often it takes the storm for us to realize the presence of God. Amen. Who is that? Who is that knocking on my heart's door? Who is that brother that wants to take me up and embrace me? It's him. It's his presence. And boy, in the midst of the storm, ain't it good to have his presence? Ain't it good to have him and know something else? It was in the time of loneliness that old Jacob he saw the ladder. He never saw that ladder. But it's in the time of loneliness. He's alone. He's by himself. And he lays down. And all of a sudden, he opens his eyes and he sees a ladder. Amen. It wasn't while he was drinking tea and eating grapes and living in the sunshine. He's running for his life. And the word of God said, here he was, and the storm came. It was in the time of loneliness, didn't it? What about the three Hebrew children? It was in the fiery furnace. When it got in the fiery furnace, what happened? Who showed up? Who showed up? Well, it was in the fiery furnace that the three Hebrew children, they saw the Son of God. Amen. I'm glad when the fire broke out and they threw him in the oven, God didn't desert them. Amen. I'm glad, brother, that God was right there with him. The Lord Jesus went in with them. Boy, it makes you want to jump up and down, shout the victory, and glorify God for what he's done. It was while being stoned that old Stephen saw Jesus at the right hand of God. It's why the stones is being thrown. It's why that his head was being hit. It's why his brains is being knocked out, that he saw Jesus on the right hand of God Almighty. Amen. 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 What a saving. You're talking about God's leadership. This is God's leadership. And the Bible said it was on the desert that Moses saw the burning bush. He's on the desert. Everything else desolate and dead and everything else. And here Moses saw this bush and it's burning. It's burning, but it's not consumed. And he starts up to the bush. And you know the bush started talking to him. And I'm so glad, thank God, that he told him what was going on. Moses got inspiration. He's on the back side of the desert. It's dry and everything else. But brother, here's a burning bush and God Almighty visits and shows up with him. Maybe in your life, I don't know what God uh, permits and what goes on, but just watch out. The Lord Jesus will be there. He'll not forsake you. He'll not leave you. He'll be there. He'll be there every step of the way. Go back in your life and relive it just to me. Go back in situations in your life. Boy, who was it come right at the nick of time seemingly? Who was it showed up? It was me. In the will of God, you can always see God in the storm. You can see him in the storm. And I'm grateful for God's amazing grace. Then the last thing, and I'll finish this next week. Blessing. Blessing. Ain't that a wonderful word? Amen. I like the word blessing. Amen. If you notice, we took time, price, friends, storms, God's leadership, and blessing. Thank God for blessing. Amen. Acts chapter 27, verse 24, verse 31. Verse 24, Acts chapter number 27, verse number 24, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Now, I kind of like this. Because if you read on, you'll find out that Paul tells them, except you buy the ship, you'll not be saved. God said, you just tell them. Everything will be all right, and I'm going to give you every one of them. 
And that's what he said. He gave it to it. Notice the Bible says, goes on, go on down. Only the will of God can have a blessing. If you look at verse number 31 of that same chapter, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Ain't you glad you got somebody with a level head? Ain't you glad you got somebody to stay in the boat? Ain't you glad you got somebody to stay fast with God that's following God's leadership and said, wait just one minute. The storms are blowing. They're going to get worse here in a minute. Matter of fact, by the time we get here next week in the book of Acts, the storm's going to really get bad. But the word of God says here he is. And all of a sudden we find that a man, he steps up and here God's been speaking to Paul. Paul's been speaking to God. And God says, listen, you tell them. You be sure and tell them. He said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Amen. It's safe to be in the ship. It can be battered. It can be bent. And it can be the whole lot. But I'm glad that God's son, brother, he'll take care of you. If we'll stay where God put us, he'll take care of us for the glory of God. If you notice, the Bible goes on and tells us, oh, John, if you go back to the story of Jonah, when you compare this with Jonah, and you look at Jonah, the story of Jonah, he was as much of a Christian as Paul was. He was as much of a Christian as anybody was. But the Word of God tells us that there was only one difference. The Bible said that Paul was in the will of God, and Jonah was not in the will of God. So Paul was in the will of God. Look what he goes through. Jonah was not. Jonah, the Bible teaches us that he was not in the will of God because of this Jonah's presence. Trouble the ship. Jonah caused trouble for the ship. Get this in your mind. Here, Jonah on the ship. He's out the will of God. Is he helping those fellows? No. He's causing the storm. He's causing the storm. I believe there's a lot of people today that's out the will of God and are causing storms in people's lives that are probably causing them their own soul, but I'm glad for God's grace. Oh, Jonah, I'm glad that God uses him and shows him. He's out in the middle of God. The Bible says in Jonah, in Jonah's presence, he, he troubled ship. But look at, look at the contrast of Paul. When you look at Paul, the Bible said that his presence, it protected those on the ship. So Jonah troubled those people, but God says Paul being on the ship, that the word of God comes down and says that he protected those that were on the ship. What a contrast. What a blessing. You say, preacher, what do you mean? It may have been the will of God. It may have been God's will. It may not be popular, but it pays. It may not be the up-to-date thing for this world, but it pays. It's the right thing. It's the right thing to be in the will of God. It's always the right thing to be in the will of God. You say, preacher, but it's liable to cost me. It costs you far more if you don't. It costs you far more if you ain't. But I'm glad. These things, the pathway to God's will in chapter 27. If you're going to read that a little bit further, you'll find the storms get a little bit worse. The ship breaks apart. Then we go into the 28th chapter. Concluding this book, a man that created a lot of havoc for the church, but look at him now. And folks are looking at this man. He, he does get to Rome. I'll tell you up front. He does get to Rome. I'm glad for the Apostle Paul. I'm glad for the Christians of 2022. I'm glad for the men and women, boys and girls, that stuck with the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. This has been one of the most trying generations ever. I have never seen all of the things that's come against God's people. And I'm not saying that they was wicked and all that stuff. I'm saying they come under disguise. They came under disguise and they're still out there under disguise. Amen. And what they want to do is lure you off and pick you off one, two, or three at a time. Amen. 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 And Satan, he builds on this. But thank God for them true blue. Thank God for those people that says, listen, though the storms may rage, I'm glad the Lord's going to stand by me and everything will be all right for the glory of God Almighty. Yes, Pathway to God's will and want God's will above everything else. The world may rock to and fro. It may get in big things and do great big things as we look at it. And Satan may say, listen, look, you need to look and try to fake us out. But we need to remember what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Now, Paul, listen to God. If you haven't listened to God, he said, folks, now listen, everybody get your life raft and get out of here. But God said, Paul, you tell them, except they abide in the ship. Except they abide in the ship. You need somebody that's kind of level-headed. You need somebody that's kind of firm. It's a throttle. 
You need somebody, brother, to say, wait just one second. Everything be all right for the glory of God. When I first came to Manchester Baptist Church, we had some storms. You know, we ain't had none since. <laughs> when God began to bless and the building started growing and we started adding on and any time you do that, you get headaches. Amen. And boy, I tell you what, things are starting to pop. People kind of getting ill. And there's an old man sat back there about where David does. This old man was Walter Rogers. Walter Rogers is Charles' dad. He sat back there and he'd pray, pray all the time. He just had one good eye. At birth, the doctor done something and messed up one of his eyes. There's no preacher. He's a prayer. I mean, he did. Talking about a prayer warrior, here's a prayer warrior. And so we'd have one of them our extracurricular activities. And go through a few little things. No brother Rogers is <laughs> just hang in there, son. Everything will be all right. I'd go down and see old Brother Massey, O.C. Massey. And I'd get talking. He said, I heard you was having some battles. I said, well, I heard it too. He said, ha, ha, ha. I said, how come you folks are always laughing? Here I am way up in years, not laughing at them young fellas, praise God, amen. Hey, everything will be all right. They done weathered the storm. Done been through it. I don't have any storms I can take probably. Desi over here, he, he stayed with his grandpa many times. And I'm sure there's a lot of storms he did see, but there's a lot of them that his grandpa kept him from. Am I pretty close there? He was a warrior. He was a warrior for Jesus. And brother, right in the middle of it, they may strike up. Even when the battle was fixing to rage, maybe somebody struck up and said, let's sing Amazing Grace. Let's have fellowship and have a neck hugging. Amen. 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 You say, blah, 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 God, blah, 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 blah. Before I left Bigham House Baptist Church, a couple of years before I left there, there was a gentleman coming. He'd never come on Wednesday night. And, and I'd been in services with him, and he'd come in, and he looked like he'd been eating persimmons before the frost hit. He come in there and he was mad. And I don't know why he's mad. But I said, I wonder why he ain't in his church after the road. And the Holy Ghost nudged me and said, just keep an eye on him, everything will be all right. So we had prayer. So when we had prayer, I said, brother, I said, come on up here and lead us. Won't you lead us in prayer? In my mind, I said, if we're going to get in a fight, you're going to pray about it first. <laughs> Amen. Amen? And we prayed. Now, we didn't do one of them two before prayers. You know, people, they, they, woo! Lord, thank you, God, we love you. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. We thank you. What you going to do? Well, you know, people just, they just pray for a storm. And finally, in a few minutes, I heard him grunt, Amen. He went back and sat down, and I got up and preached in a few minutes. He left before I get back and shake his hand. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if it calmed the situation or not, but I do know one thing. He had a different thing on his mind than he had when he got there. Amen. And still don't know. I still don't know. When he gets to heaven, I won't have to ask him because he forgot it. <laughs> but things happen. Things happen. And I've always been one. I've always been one. I've always been one that you're not going to jeopardize what these people feel. Y'all got that? You're not going to sabotage what these people feel. 
We're not going to let you build a church, support the church, come here and raise your family here and everything else, and sit back and let some deadhead come in and destroy. Take right. an amen right there. Amen. I'm not the smartest fella on the block. Amen. amen. But I am street smart. Brother Seth McDarris, he talked about it, those things going on. He said, it's about time people's jumping in these pulpits and everything. He said, well, I'll tell you, he said, uh, anybody try to take over his pulpit, said they'll wear it out the door. <laughs> Did y'all get that? <laughs> he wouldn't do nobody no harm. But I think people look good dressed in the pulpit. <laughs> what do you mean? Your church? Your God, your opportunity, your time, give it your best. Amen. Storms will come. Yes, Let them drive you closer to God. Amen. Let them drive you closer together. Yes, sir. And somebody stand up and stand your hand and say, come on, this way. Amen. I don't want victory. Amen. Let's go for victory, amen. amen. God take care of it for the glory of God. Yes, Paul, stand, thank you for your time. I was going to let you out early tonight, but I ain't going to do it. Everybody glad you're saved. Say amen. amen. God is so good to people that listens by streaming. We have several people that listens by streaming. They don't get streaming. They usually listen to it later on on YouTube. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Amen. That for a while during the uh, uh, COVID, uh, people were using the streaming in different YouTube things that's done in church for just fighting and fussing and just all that stuff because it's full of the devil. But the whole object is to try to reach somebody. So that's the whole idea. That's why that we do our Sunday school. That's the reason we do put everything we can over it. I thought about just quitting one time. You folks know that. I just about got fed up with these people. I'm telling you, supposed to be feet people's fixing fly away, and they just couldn't keep their mouth shut off of everybody. But God done some things at Mount Sheba. Amen. Let her fly. Amen, yes, Let her fly. Amen. Give it your best. Wherever you at, give it your best. Right. Give it your best. Amen, this thing's about over. Amen. Pray for these Sunday school teachers. Amen. Pray God fill them full of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm hoping one Sunday morning we'll have to scrape them off the ceiling. Amen. Come in here and decorate the ceiling with footprints. Amen? Amen. Preach, you've lost it. Go back 30 years and tell me I've lost it. Amen? Amen. Right. God is good. Amen. And I'm glad. Amen. The pathway that leads to the will of God. Amen. Seek his will. Search for his will. Amen. It's a hard thing sometimes to find. But you can. Amen. Be in the will of God. Amen. When you get in the will of God, give it all you got. Amen. Amen. And let's praise him for everything he does. Amen. Pray for our country. It needs some help. Amen. Needs some You know what's fixing to happen? I don't know what, you know, I'm not a very smart fellow, but I think that if America does lose its identity, the church is out here before, and I'm looking for the rapture. Amen. But keep living. Just keep enjoying yourself. Amen. Don't go hump up like most of them's done or humped up at the house. Well, you know, things just ain't like it used to be. No. We got cars now. We got running water. We got lights. Amen. We got shoes. Thank God it ain't like it used to be. And I know what they're trying to say. They're so spiritual. But boy, let's get God on us. Let's get God on us. Let's go for God. Amen. Dean, how old is Mrs. Empire?